and good afternoon. Thank you for coming to my channel. Today I'd like to discuss with you corruption and how it actually transpires in society. I'd like to discuss with you a thought experiment detailing how individualized corruption often has many flaws and failings when it actually comes time to act. Many of us oftentimes think that we are brave but have yet to be tested, as we are courageous but have yet to have our resolves put to the, put to the, put to the test. Well, I was in a class called Ethics of Bioengineering, and this class discussed various problems about ethics within research. Many, many such subjects included, for example, the ethics of animal research, what can be done to reduce the harm, and so forth. Part of this class was frequently answering a myriad of questions relating to various cases. And one of these cases that was told to us, I shall recount to you. The teacher asked us the following question, posed us this question. Let us imagine that you are a researcher working for some kind of pharmaceutical company, and your department is responsible for developing some kind of capsule around the pastille that you will be taking, uh, around the pill that you will be taking, and that you will be selling, of course, that other people will be taking. It is like the the outer part of a capsule, the outer part of a, of, a, of a pill or a tablet of some kind. That is your responsibility, not anything else. Your, respons your responsibility is, uh, is not the pharmacological effects of the pill, but it is simply, your responsibility is simply that of producing the capsule containing it. And in your research, in your preparing this capsule, in your research, you discover that this capsule actually, that this, that this medicine is actually da very dangerous, that it's like actually very dangerous and that there is, that it, it, it cannot be released to the masses because it will cause, because there have been oversights and uh, it was, its production was rushed and it is actually poisonous. It will kill hundreds of people if it is released. You know this for a fact. Let's say you know, let's say that this is a given fact. You know that this will be the end of a hundred or so people if it is released into the public. What do you do? Well, in this scenario, let us say you confront, the teacher says that we confront, that we have to, after confronting our supervisor, our manager, the manager says, this is not your department. You have other, other work to do. This is not your responsibility. Please don't talk about this or you will lose your job. Now, of course, in real life, this is not, not how things happen, of course. In real life, mm, things, hap things are, have a way of being more subtle in real life. I, I can tell you from my experience. When people threaten you with losing your job in exchange for uh, being quiet, they, they, they don't say it so openly. <laughs> they don't say it so openly. But... Let, this is this, the, the teacher asked us what we would do in that scenario, and they asked all of the students, and all of the students in class said that they would not tolerate this. They would file reports, they would make the biggest noise that they could, and they would not stand to watch innocent people suffer and die for the sake of this, of this pill. And that they, that they would take whatever consequence came their way, and they would tear this, this manager... Uh, <laughs> Into two, they said that they, they, they said all kinds of uh, individualistic. They proposed many individualistic solutions that involved them directly confronting people and directly opposing it and putting a stop to it themselves, that they would not allow it to continue. So then my question in this case is, why, why does it continue? Why does, <laughs> why does it continue? If, I mean, surely everyone in the class is in agreement that they would not tolerate this. And yet, why do things like this happen? Mm. The teacher asked me what I would do when it was my turn to answer, and I would say, well, if I'm working there, I probably need the money. 
and I probably w won't be able to stop anything by myself, and once they fire me, they will just get someone else to do it, and I would, I would most likely just continue doing my job. I would just be quiet and continue doing my job. Maybe I would make sure, that, maybe I would look for other work, I would seek other sources of employment, but it is my experience that this kind of corruption is unanimous across every single field. In every single place of employment, I've witnessed similar levels of corruption. But, now have you, now have you know, in this class we often talked about transgender, L lesbian, gay, bisexual orientations and how we must respect these groups of people and we must not use slurs, we must use respectful language when discussing them, treat them fairly and equitably, that we are supposed to treat everyone as an equal and to always be kind and and make safe spaces everywhere we go. When I delivered this answer to this class, of which many of the students in previous, previous classes had went to great lengths explaining how important it is to not use slurs and to respect people and to respect people's orientation and to, and to uh, stop bigotry in its tracks. They also discussed about how they would stand up to bigotry in its tracks in a classroom. In a previous class, the teacher had also asked us, "What would you do? What would you do if you were witness, if you witnessed a coworker or uh, at, at 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 your company being subjected to a, a, a homophobic slur?" And they all said the same thing that they would confront, they would uh, not accept. Some of them even said they would use violence. All of these things. And yet, when I gave my answer to the question as to what I would do, one of my classmates who who specifically gave a very a very impassioned speech about about how, how how damaging slurs are in the workplace and how how important it is to create safe spaces at work and to be respectful of your employees and who said that they would violently confront anyone who would use such a language in the workplace this classmate of mine refer, called me a, a a homophobic and a sexist slur in this situation they used a word that begins with p and ends with y and this word is often used to denote uh, either femininity in a man or uh, female genitalia. And it is often used to signify that someone is a coward because they are less masculine, less manly. And apparently my answer meant that I was some kind of coward because I did not, out of all the students in the class, I was the only one who would not, would not, confront, would not confront my manager over such corruption. Maybe I am wrong for not, not I, I, I make no defense of myself. Maybe I am wrong for not standing up for what's right. Maybe. But they used a sexist and a homophobic slur for me right after saying that they would stand up for corruption against bigotry. They used a slur. And I immediately turned to my classmate and I said, Did you just call me that word? Did you just call me that word? And they said, Yes, because you are this, because you wouldn't stand up to the capitalists, you wouldn't stand up to the, the corrupt, greedy, this and that and so forth. And I raised my hand and I, t I told on them. I'm a 31-year-old man and I raised my hand in class and I asked the teacher, um, I asked the teacher if this was acceptable and I, the teacher just stood there and didn't say anything, didn't give a single word, not a peep. And I said to the, all, the entire class, you all gave speeches about how unacceptable it was to, to, to use uh, sexist and homophobic slurs in the workplace. And you all said you would defend someone if they, if they, if they were subjected like this in, in front of everyone. You all heard it. You all laughed. You all thought it was comedic. How can you, how can you allow this injustice to happen? Why wouldn't any of you defend me? And a few people said, man, just STF you. That's what they said. And that was it. This was my experience with, with how I have witnessed corruption actually manifest itself in real life. And I find it very curious that the course of action people tell themselves they will take is often very different than how it actually plays out in real life. Have you witnessed similar situations in your life? In which people... In which people's ideas of how they would stand up to injustice actually went in the opposite direction. 
when it was time to display such valor or bravery. I speak no ill of my classmates. They are all honorable and great people. I don't think that this particular incident paints the, their character. I think the reality of corruption is that it goes much deeper than we allow it, than we allow ourselves to think. And if we extend to others the charity of humanity, we may, we may actually be able to make meaningful changes in this world. What do you think? I'd love to know similar examples of how you've witnessed corruption, and specifically people who claim they would stand up to, to corruption, either standing up to it or failing to do so. I'd love to know either example. Please, if, if you have witnessed something like that, let me know in the comments. I will read it if I have less than 100 comments. I, I will promise to read it, and I will probably respond. So I really do appreciate you coming here and watching my video. I would love to know what you think. God bless you all. I love you. Please be safe, and please treat each other with love and respect and dignity, and most importantly, mercy. I love you all again.